shit, guys. Fire our shit. Well, howdy, folks, and welcome back. We've all got that game that has a special place in our hearts, one that's years old, out of date, and surpassed by newer offerings in so many ways, but we keep coming back to, despite its apparent shortcomings. For myself, that game is StarCraft. StarCraft was first released in 1998 by Blizzard, and I used to play it on my Macintosh back in the day. What was neat about StarCraft was that it was released with Mac and DOS versions simultaneously, and on the same CD. In a day where, uh... Gaming on the Mac was often behind its DOS Windows counterparts, if it isn't still today. This was huge. Not that long ago, Blizzard overhauled the graphics and OS compatibility of StarCraft, releasing it as StarCraft Remastered, and I bought my copy right away. You can download and play the original StarCraft and the expansion Brood War for free from Blizzard's official site, and I highly recommend it. There will be a link in the uh, video description. If you like it enough, you can buy the remastered version and reap the aforementioned benefits. Now on to the meat of this video, how I build out my Terran base. Incidentally, these tactics work in the free non-remastered version as well. Now, right in the beginning, if you're going to be playing computer opponents, you need to get started on uh, digging crystals. You see these crystals here? This is your main currency in the game, as well as these little uh, blowholes blowing green gas out. That's where you buy Vespian gas. Rather, you don't buy it, you mine it. But right away, first thing I did was get my four diggers going. They're called SCVs. And I started building another one. It takes 50 crystals to build one. If you look in the top right corner, you see we're at 5, 6 out of 10. That means that uh, this one building of ours supports 10 units, and we have 6 running at the moment. One, of The 6th one being the one that we're building at this time. We need to build at least 7 or 8 of these first. Um, the reason we're so hot on it at the beginning is because when you're playing against a Zerg, especially a computer opponent, they like to rush, and Zerg can get units out fairly quickly, so it is absolutely imperative that we start uh, building some sort of defenses to keep them out. Uh, we're going to use supply depots. Now you can see we're at 7 out of 10, which means once we get to 10, we won't be able to build any more units, so we need to build something, and we're going to use those supply depots. They give you 8 per unit. Um, what are we getting here? Yep, we're getting close. And we're going to use these uh, for a technique called walling off. And uh, basically what we're doing is we're blocking the entrance with something that has a fair number of hit points. It's also not that expensive for us to build, but it will slow them down long enough while any defensive units we have built can be taking shots at them uh, relatively protected by being behind these structures. So we're going to get this started, and it's a good thing. We're now down to 8 out of 10. All right. Compadre started building the first. We've got 84 uh, crystal. Time to build another SCV. This game is uh, quite a, it's a race to build the most stuff quicker in a lot of ways. If you have money in the bank, you probably don't have enough stuff on the map. You have not been building quick enough. It is just very, very important. So here we're going to start with a barracks and uh, because we're going to need some defensive units. Once we get the barracks, we will build some marines, but we'll see that in a second here. Okay, this guy is, they're finished. And we see here we need 100. We've only got 40 something. Digging, 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 keep on digging, buddies. Get up to 60. Now this is uh, always in the beginning, you always find yourself a little bit short of funds, right? Just about there, just about there, we're at 90. There we go. We have to get these as close together as possible in order to make a, a pretty good block. The initial Zerg units are very small. Um, they can be hard to block physically. So it will be important to have a few Marines around. I also hope that uh, the Zerg will stop to attack these buildings, even though they can get through. Uh, bigger units can't get through. We would be forced to destroy these uh, buildings first in order to progress on into our base. So they're good for those. The initial Zerg, though, Sometimes they can really, you really need some Marines kicking around as a Terran. Getting very close to finishing construction of this one. SCV is building. The barracks looks like it's coming along pretty good here too. Okay. Let's get that last. Now you got to find a place for it. They require, and that would leave too much gap. That looks like a good spot. We'll put him there. Excellent. Got a Marine. Build a Marine. Not enough minerals. We want to get a bunker going here right away. 
Now, we've also got enough uh, money here to start building our first gas refinery, and we need that for advanced units later on, so. Not enough minerals, because I went and got uh, the bunker going by the time he got there to build, okay. As I said in the beginning, there's a very small margin. So we got our first marine, that's good. As soon as we get to... We're waiting for him, yeah, we'll get another one of them going first. So our bunker's not quite ready. Takes 50 for a marine. Okay. Now you can see the unit the size of our SCV can't get through that gap. And that's something at the beginning I should have paid more attention to where he would be standing when he built that building. As it is, he's a goner. So I sent him off exploring. We've got a marine in the bunker. This SCV is going to keep building these bunkers here. That guy. Gas mines, now we've got two units on the gas mine. I find optimum for the gas mines is about three SCVs per. So one is going in just as, just waiting to go in a split second before the next guy comes out. So there's no gap in production that way. We still need a lot more SCVs mining crystals. Oh, we found our Zerg and they are right close by here. Uh, there's probably more effective things I could certainly have done with this unit, but uh, in fact, I decided, oh, okay, let's get out of here. They kind of ignore you until uh, at least their diggers do. Oh, I've started to attack a unit, and I am not long with this world. They send everything they've got to uh, wipe me out first. So that's fine. We know where he is. It's only the loss. They also know that I'm around somewhere, too. And it won't be long before we see some uh, zerglings come running for us. And there's our third guy in the gas mine. That's good. I'm uh, pretty happy with our rate of production here. I'm going to keep these marines coming here. But we've got a long way to go yet. You can see there's extra opportunities on the map. This map is actually quite loaded with resources. So if the fight went on long enough, you could push out and start another base. And that sort of thing. Jacked up and good to go. <laughs> yeah, put the fourth guy in that bunker. Bunkers hold four. All right. Now, we want to get some uh, missile turrets going, but we have to have an engineering bay first. There's a dependency tree for units. Another SCV. Get to digging, mister. Build another one of those. I do indeed, sir. I want a piece of you. Put it down in there. As soon as we get 50, we'll build another marine. Okay, he's in the bunker. Off we go. Excellent. This is working out pretty good so far. We'll see what happens though. They have to have these defenses up by the time they send their first people. Now the reason I want a missile turret, first it uh, helps protect you from airborne threat. It is also a detector for invisible units. Uh, yes, there are cloaked or invisible units in the game, so you need your detectors. We'll see another unit later called a space ball. Well, I call it the space ball. <laughs> it's a science vessel. And uh, it's also able to detect cloaked units. So our second gas mine going up here. Keep the SCV production going. We're going to need two more there. Okay, here's our engineering bay. Now we can build missile turrets. Yeah, I'm just trying to find the right spot. That'll do. Here's our last uh, our marine for this particular bunker. Pretty sure. Yep. I think that's the last one. We'll see. And we're going to start our first upgrade for the marines. Which we get from the engineering bay. Okay. More SCV production. Go, go, go. It's constant all the time. This should be... Yeah, okay. That's our last marine in that bunker. So we'll have two full bunkers. Not too bad. Keep the SCVs coming. That'll be a while on its upgrade. Just finished there. Our first missile turret. Let's get another one going here. They take 150. I believe it is. You want a piece of me, boy? Give me some issue. Yeah, SCV sitting there. Get him doing something. Let's get the uh, factory going. 200 we need, there we go. In the factory we can build siege tanks. Siege tanks are very important to our defense. 
They're a better defensive weapon than they are offensive. Because they act like a piece of artillery. You're just going to see that they are really quite effective. Quite fun to watch, actually, when you have a whole bunch of them floating around. Oh, first Zergs coming in. Now they are getting through that teeny gap in our buildings. It's a good thing we have lots of Marines floating around. They're still making their way through. We have to get that other turret filled up. You see, I've set that SCV. It's one of the qualities of an SCV. They are able to repair units and structures. Oh, this guy. Hydralisk is now, they've got a bigger unit. He can't get in, so he's going to be throwing his venom at uh, structures within his reach. The sooner we get our siege tanks happening, the better off we will be. Okay, there's one more. Oh, the Protoss are here too. Now the Protoss, for some reason, this is one of the AI mechanics in the game. They have set their guys to show up here, not on attack mode, but on a move mode. So they're trying to get into the base, but they're wandering around because they can't figure out how to do it. Which is fortunate for us, because right at this point, we'd have a hard time repelling all those Protoss. Protoss take longer to build, but they are tougher. They have a personal shield, and they have good hit points. So you have to knock down the shield before you start knocking down their hit points. And during which time, they are bashing away at anything of yours. And we're getting... The factory is built. We're getting the... Uh, attachment built onto it we need the attachment to uh, research siege tank abilities because these guys are wandering around they're just getting shot at by our marines good for us engineering bay is about two-thirds done that upgrade for the marines that'll help them shoot further goodbye zerg just banging away at the post Protoss there. Oh, and that is a Zerg. That's the Zerg equivalent of a supply depot right there. Flies around. You could also use it as a very slow moving scout. But uh, there are a lot of times where I will go and try and kill those off to reduce their production. Now, what I'm doing right here is using. I'm going to start building more command centers as opposed to supply depots. Command Center. Supply depots take up space. Uh, one of the nice things about a lot of the main Terran buildings is that they can lift off the ground and you can move them. So what my strategy is, a tactic I like to use, is to, when I need more supplies, I build command centers, lift them off, and move them off to a corner of the map, saving me ground space for lots of other buildings that I'm going to want. Because uh, a lot of the bases can tend to be cramped. So this saves space, and you get uh, and you get and you get ten, ten per thing too. So it's uh, they take longer to build, but they can be moved away. So it's kind of a if you're desperate, build a supply depot. Right, right now I have no production because I got a little bit behind on that. I see also I've got a SCV trapped over here again, and this time I think I'm going to tell it to kill off the missile tower. And then I'll get him out of there and rebuild it. Because right now, without being able to produce any more units, I don't want to lose the capacity for that guy to build stuff. We got a ways to go on here. So that just forces me down the decision. What we're gonna do here to take out that missile tower. Use our attack ability. Everybody here is in pretty decent shape still. Uh, no, we're not doing the armor upgrade. We're just about finished there. We're just about finished the um, siege tank research. I think, yeah, there's the time has come now. We're going to uh, hit the attack here and take this out. Could have started that a little bit sooner. We're doing all right though at the moment. We need some more supplies, which are coming up very quickly. There we go, now we've got 10 production left. Not those, they ask these. And I've got lots of crystals laying around because I haven't spent any for a while without uh, being able to produce. Now I'll pick that guy up and we'll just move him off to the corner where it's uh, far more convenient. And we'll start building another one right away. Now that we've got a crystal 
production level here of, uh, that can sustain this kind of building. Once you start getting one, uh, one SCV per crystal, those kind of levels, then you usually have a fairly decent cash flow going on there. Now we are just blasting away at these guys. And pretty quick, this is going to get a lot harder. Now you see me building a lot of missile towers. You're wondering why I'm building so many. I intend to ring my whole base, all exposed sides with missile towers because uh, there are Protoss units that they can use to warp people in, almost like a Star Trek transporter. Do, do, do. Now the building I just built there is used for upgrades and set him to siege tank mode. Watch what he starts doing. You're gonna start to hear that cannon go off right away. Boom. There we go. So it's arranged weapon which is really good yeah everything is building hope oh, this guy needs to get keep going so yeah the whole base will be ringed with uh, missile towers if it's almost like your distant early warning line radar towers that we used to have up in northern Canada if they still don't have that back in the day of the Cold War boom one siege tank now we got a second siege tank this is good and that guy needs to build another missile tower. Missile towers are relatively inexpensive, so they're not a bad way. What have we got here in the armory? Pretty soon that's going to be done, and we'll start upgrading our vehicle weapons and airborne weapons. We haven't built any airborne units yet, but we will be in the future. Identify target. Put him in siege mode. Getting close on that armory. Yeah. Now these are much the bigger, these are even bigger Protoss units. They're progressing just as we are. Well, they still haven't quite figured out huh, how to uh, get in here. That is a, definitely a limitation of the AI that I'm exploiting. Oh, little, little Zerglings. We got a lot more guns on them now. I'm going to send this guy down here and start repairing some of these buildings. We might even leave him there on a more permanent basis. Fix that one up. Bunkers, oh, that bunker's a little, it's a little bit damaged. Another tank coming. And we'll just put him in siege mode right away so he can start shooting those guys. We've got the uh, supply depots repaired here. And I think we're good to go for the moment. There, let's, re let's do the vehicle upgrade on their weapons right away. We're going to build two of these because upgrades take a while. We might as well have them both working on upgrades at the same time. We've got the income to support it. Ooh, another tank looking good. I don't think we'll build more than five or six of them. Destination. Destination. Gas mine seems to be fully, fully equipped with people. All right. Yes, sir. We'll brief lull in the action getting closer to having this side f uh, fully engulfed in our missile towers if you look really closely at the missile tower there's a little looks like a marine sitting in there spinning around <laughs> man I only imagine how dizzy he is when he steps out of there okay looking sharp won't do any more upgrades on the marines there yet we got one more tank building. And we're going to have to build an academy at some point because there are marine upgrades for the guns there. This guy's done. Get him out of there. Build another tower. Getting really close to having this side done, which is nice. This armory is just about finished. Job, job, job. And we've finished building another command center. We'll lift him off and send him away. Get this guy building. Keep it rolling. Okay, looks like we've got all our siege tanks out. Looks like the enemy has taken a moment to regroup. Which is good. Okay, get him going. We are so close. Oh, there's our last tank right there. Where are we going to put him? I'm just having a look around my perimeters. See if there's any enemies sitting around that we can blast from a distance. But nope. So we'll put him up here at the front line. Oh, armory ready. 
let's go with uh, ship now nah, we'll first we'll upgrade the armor on our ground vehicles you never know they could start taking some hits benefit from that it's almost done oh this guy needs to keep going yeah this is going pretty well a couple more scvs get to digging now what is this guy gonna do it's time to start building starports We do here we have those and then we have a uh, an attachment for those that allows us to start building a variety of uh, air units one of the main ones we'll be building our battle cruisers get this guy in siege mode here can't do much good work without being there do, do. jobs finished that's probably a missile tower yeah we're looking pretty good here a few things to do before I would call this base uh, finished yet though Do, 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 do. Jobs finished. Yep. And this will be the last missile tower on this side. That side will be finished. We can start using him for other building projects. Probably get him going on the starports. I like to have lots of starports. That way you can build lots of ships at once to replace your losses. And quickly refill your ranks. Armory is still spinning away. We are looking pretty good. Jobs finished. Well, there might be one more to do here. I'm not sure if we got enough space for another. Yeah, put one there. Oh, that guy's done there. We'll lift off, mister. He's done. He is done. We do need a science facility here, actually. This allows... Uh, you have to have a science facility to build certain area units. It also has upgrades for the science vessel the space ball so we're going to need that so we'll get that going put the attachment on that starport job's finished okay now he really doesn't have any more room we could do that but why the whole side is ringed let's get him uh no i don't think you know not there we'll get him building another starport that other guy oh research in the armory i see is done and we can do, uh, well, there's nothing else available at the moment. We we'll should do some uh, ship weapon upgrade, I think. Now this guy. Yeah, not there. Yeah, we need an academy. There is a uh, upgrade for the Marines. Allows them to shoot farther, shoot harder. Yeah, we'll build a wraith. Oh, here we go. New attacks coming. And now with our... Those guys can hide in the ground. Normally they would be invisible in the ground, but we've got missile towers that have enough range to see them. So, boom, boom, boom. And now that we've done the first upgrade on the uh, siege tank weaponry, it has the ability to reach a little further too. Start building. Oh, ha! That guy's in the way. Wait for him to move and boom, drop that down. And get busy on uh, starports here. And nothing there. Maybe it's the academy that's done. Uh, oh, that one. Gotcha. Get the tower on. Things looking good. This guy needs something new to do, like a new starport. There we go. I like to keep them as close together as possible. Oh, we got our first air unit. All right, we'll put them over here. And we'll start doing upgrades and research for our battle cruisers. Okay, I see the academy is built. This guy needs to keep building these things. We can't afford to have a stoppage in our supply depots because the battle cruisers take eight uh, slots per unit. So we have to have, we can top out at 200. So we're trying to get there as quick as possible as well. Do the uh, down. Okay, we're going to make a couple of science vessels or space balls, as I like to call them. Oh, missiles going off. Boom, boom. Looking good. So this guy has finished his star part. Let's get him building another. Ha, something's in the way. Keep the armories doing their upgrades. Have to wait for this guy to move. 
I hear another wraith is finished building. And we are blasting the crap out of all their ground units. Very nice. All right, another wraith there. Report for duty. Yeah, and we are getting much closer to being able to say that this base is finished. Add on complete. No, we've got, no, I think we've got just about, yeah, I'd say we got every building that we wanted. I've got an extra guy up there by the academy. Have to get him building stuff soon too. Start building some of the battle cruisers. Battle cruisers are one of my favorite ways to push the uh, Terran ideology out on its opponents. Commencing. You will listen to some of the voices in StarCraft. They had some of the actors of the day, such as the Spaceball, is voiced by the guy who does Mr. Burns on The Simpsons. Um, I know another, there's a little guy that walks around and shoots missiles and stuff, uh, Goliaths. He's voiced by Michael Dorn, the guy who does Lieutenant Worf in Star Trek. Yeah, they got some cool, cool voices. There we go, that's done. We're going to put a uh, commsat station on there. It allows us to basically have almost like using a spy satellite. Ooh, there goes one of their missile, their invisible probes. Just toasted them up with the missile towers. Transports dropping ground units. They are, they don't have a hope in Hakaluna getting in here right now. So we're just blasting the crap at everybody. Yeah. Boom, boom. Ooh. Managed to get a little damage done there. Upgrades are being finished. Everything's coming around here all at the same time. Ooh, another one. Probably do. Uh, do we need tank armor? I don't know. We're doing guns right now. Let's go repair some stuff here. You can see the. Uh, just to the left near the bottom of your screen a little bit but above the uh, little mini map there is an invisible probe there he goes cruising around not getting into missile range this time he may have learned a thing or two let's repair these buildings so that they are at their best for the next attack provide maximum protection for the longest amount of time upgrade our space balls and start building now we're running low on uh, minerals because battle cruisers are also very expensive. I think they're 400 a pop. We need one transport just in case for further on in the game. It's always fun to drop a load of marines in the back base of an opponent. <laughs> really messes with their production. Now, okay, we did. Uh, these are medics. If we were using more of a ground strategy, I would build medics but uh, not in this particular episode. All right, start building. There we go. We can get another upgrade to the guns on the Marines. Helps them just hit harder. All right, there's 400 down. Yeah, it's very important to keep. I'm gonna say before, if you've got money in the bank, you're probably not building fast enough. I'm gonna take these rates out. Have a look around here. Oh, there's an invisible unit. You can see the uh, warp effect in front of... Oh, and they are overloaded with units in here. Turn these guys around and get out. It would not have helped to have my cloak on at all. Because they're uh, floating supply depot guys. They uh, they can detect cloaked units. Okay, looks like our production is good. Have a good look in there and see what's going on. I should have done that before I sent my race over, but that's okay. Race are relatively cheap and we have good defenses up at this time. Oh, they're chasing our space ball out. Yeah, we need to get more uh, supplies going here right away. He can repair him. He's building a command center up there. Ooh, there's one of their probes right there. Might send my last wraith down there to 
try and take out that probe or chase them away anyway. We don't need them having intelligence in what we're doing. That wraith is just about toast though. Hopefully he won't run into too much uh, opposition. Put a few shots into that guy, but we'll bring him back so he doesn't die. Okay, we're starting to get a few battle cruisers. And space ball. I always keep a space ball with my battle cruiser uh, squadron because there are invisible or cloaked units, and you need to be able to see them in order to shoot them and defend yourself. We're getting really close here. I'm really liking the way this base is coming together. But we're going to just set it up here so that... Uh, there we go. Get these upgrades rolling. Always have to keep progressing. It's always a race. Oh, okay. So you get this thing off the ground and out of the way. Getting quite a few of those. Now, the nice thing about command centers, too, if you found an opportunity to go mine or take over another base location, you can send it down there very slowly. Send it with a fighter escort, even. All right. Getting better at a close. Now that we'll have dual command center production, we'll end up with quite a bit of... Uh, should not run out of supplies in order to build units, especially these uh, battle cruisers. Enough energy. Oh, enough energy. Okay, our commsat station is out of juice. More battle cruisers. These are coming along. 88 and 94. We could build. Nope, we can't build another one just yet. Yeah. Everything is looking quite good here. Oh. Thump, thump. Yeah, I'll build the stim packs. It's good. Uh, it enhances the Marines' abilities if you choose to use them. It costs them 10 health, but they fire faster. If you need that in an extreme situation. Okay, good. Taking out some of their air stuff here, too. Now, that what they've just sent on us is... Uh, it freezes those units. They can no longer act. So it's a nasty thing to have happen to you. But we have lots of firepower here, so they have not been able to overwhelm us just yet. Level cruiser operational. <laughs> oh, they went after our space ball that time. Back in there. All right, well, this is looking pretty good. Oh, they're getting a little more feisty with their air units. They really want our space ball out of there. I just sit and launched an EMP at them. <laughs> that knocks their shields down. You can launch EMPs from the space ball, and it will knock out the shield of a Protoss unit, which is quite handy. Then you have a lot less shooting to do at it to knock it down. So here we go. We're gonna. We're doing really well here with uh, supply production. Well, guys. You know, that's about it. You have a look at the map here. We are fully ringed in towers. We've got good ground defenses up front. We are building double time command centers to get us up to the 200 rate. And we're doing all our upgrades and we're building a battle cruiser fleet. This is the point where you can take off and start being pretty aggressive. So we'll leave it here. All right. Thanks for coming out, folks. I will talk to you later.